It's the United Nations Week, everybody. Are you guys excited? Yeah? Yeah! Well, clearly, it's because you don't live in New York! <laughs> but the United Nations General Assembly can be an exciting affair, right? It's the only time all the leaders from around the world come together to try and solve the world's problems as one. Uh, it's also a time when they try and throw diplomatic shade at each other, uh, which is so much fun to watch. Because basically what will happen is one leader will say something crappy about another nation, but there's always a delay for the translations, you know? So it's like someone will be like, the world cannot keep its eyes closed during this genocide. Well, I mean, maybe the Spanish can. They nap through everything. <laughs> Now, now, the big event today was uh, President Trump's first address to the General Assembly, and expectations were high. President Trump set to address the UN General Assembly this morning. CNN is told the president will deliver a deeply philosophical address. That is what the White House is calling it. Hmm. <laughs> Trump and deeply philosophical <laughs> are two things that I never thought I'd hear in the same sentence. Like, I can't imagine him being deeply philosophical. <laughs> I often ponder, <laughs> is there life after death? Because I'd really love to bang Marie Antoinette. <laughs> ponder. So, would the president be deeply philosophical? Or would he be Donald Trump? Well, this morning, we finally find out. We found out when he got up to speak in front of his most diverse audience of all time. Although, uh, Trump loves these foreigners because they've already pre-booked their tickets home. Now, <laughs> President Trump's address included many, many familiar themes, you know, uh, how great he's doing as president, uh, how great the country's doing with him as president, how much he's president. Did I mention he's president? <laughs> oh, and military. The military's getting $700 billion. But the centerpiece for his speech was introducing the United Nations to the Trump doctrine. As president of the United States, I will always put America first. Just like you, as the leaders of your countries, will always and should always put your countries first. If we are to embrace the opportunities of the future and overcome the present dangers together, there can be no substitute for strong, sovereign, and independent nations. The only way to grow together is to grow apart. It sounds like Donald Trump is trying to break up with the UN without getting into a fight. <laughs> I love you, I just don't love us. <laughs> and maybe in time, we can make it work. By the way, this is my fiance, Russia. <laughs> now, now, many more conventional uh, foreign policy minds may complain that this Trump doctrine is effectively relinquishing American global leadership, but there could be an upside. In America, we do not seek to impose our way of life on anyone. We do not expect diverse countries to share the same cultures, traditions, or even systems of government. Whoa, look at you, Donald. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's different. And I know for many people, this, this stance may be disconcerting. But from a global perspective, it is refreshing to see an American leader who's not going to dictate to the world. In fact, Donald Trump almost wants nothing to do with the world. It's like Trump looks at the globe and all he sees is a map full of Eric's. <laughs> nothing at all! <laughs> Stay away from me! <laughs> so Trump's new policy... That was weird, by the way. <laughs> So Trump's new policy, uh, no interfering in how other countries are run, unless he doesn't like how other countries are run. The problem in Venezuela is not that socialism has been poorly implemented, but that socialism has been faithfully implemented. We are prepared to take further action if the government of Venezuela persists on its path to impose authoritarian rule <laughs> on the Venezuelan people. Nailed it. <laughs> Few things are worse than slipping up on a word when you're trying to be a badass. <laughs> yeah, it's the reason Liam Neeson never got his other daughter back. 
I have a particular set of skills. Sorry, particular set of... No, you know what I was saying. What do you... Hey, I, why would I say particular? Why would I say that? What, particular is not even a word. You know what? Wrong number. Keeper. Bye-bye. <laughs> but tongue slip aside, that was a very quick trip from you do you to we do you. And Trump didn't just threaten Venezuela. He also called for sanctions on Cuba, uh, an alliance against Iran, a new regime in Syria. Uh, but ever the showman, he saved the end of the world for last. The United States has great strength and patience. But if it is forced to defend itself or its allies, we will have no choice but to totally destroy North Korea. Rocket Man is on a suicide mission for himself and for his regime. Okay, I don't, I don't know what's more insane. The fact that Donald Trump just stood in front of the United Nations and threatened to wipe out a country of 25 million people, or the fact that he followed that up with Rocket Man. <laughs> like, you're gonna follow it up with, like, a little catchphrase joke? That's like walking into a crowded space, pulling out a gun and being like, did I do that? <laughs> Uh, yeah, you did. <laughs> you know, honestly, when you watched this address, it felt less like a presidential address to the UN and more like an insult comic roasting the world. In fact, if Trump didn't have power or nuclear weapons, I think that would be a pretty dope show. The problem in Venezuela is not that socialism has been poorly implemented, but that socialism has been faithfully implemented. The United States has stood against the corrupt, destabilizing regime in Cuba, the criminal regime of Bashar al-Assad. We will have no choice but to totally destroy North Korea. Rocket Man 